Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So, welcome to your general energy reading for your Wednesday, your half day. Yes. I mean, I can't, I can't, even though these readings are timeless, like especially morning coffee, even the monthly readings are timeless, but like whatever, especially like morning coffee and daily readings and stuff like that. These are timeless readings, but I can't, I can't pass up a hump day shimmy. Like, hey, <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Um, we're almost out of 2020, you guys. Like literally two days left. Well, depending on where you are. If you're over in like the UK, your day is almost done by the time you're seeing this. Um, those of you that are like, say, in Australia, y'all are already on the 31st, like damn near on the 31st so far. But here in the United States, it's only the 30th. As of the moment that I'm recording this reading, of course. But this is a timeless reading, so don't get caught up on the dates, okay? Okay. All right. Just, just so we're clear. Okay. <laughs> anyway. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're having a good week. I hope you are finding time to enjoy yourselves as much as you possibly can. Spend time with family or loved ones or just friends, people that make you feel good or just spending time with yourself feeling good or working on feeling good. Um, yeah, I mean, this is definitely not how we expected anything in 2020 to go, but let alone the holiday season, but you know. We're making do, right? Okay. Let's get into this here and see what messages we have for your day. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate clarity in terms of the places, circumstances, and situations we needed the most. Thank you so much, Spirit. Alrighty, kids. Five shuffles for you. And we'll see what we've got. Yes? Here we go. One. Two. For the collective. Is this three? Daily reading. Four. And five. All right. So what's going on today? What messages do we have? What do we want to talk about today? Ten of Pentacles. However, the Ten of Pentacles, whoa. The cards are doing some weird things today. They're flipping around in all kinds of weird, weird ways. Okay. Seven of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. I feel like we're talking about um, individuals that are, I want to say, caught up in the matrix. You have the Ten of Pentacles here. That was the first card that came out, but it came out in reverse. Um, and to me, and uh, as a reader, I see the Ten of Pentacles as a number of different things. One of them being, one of them including being a, a representation of a wrap up of a chapter. A certain life lesson or a certain life circumstance or a chapter in your life has come to an end. And for many people in the collective so far, in the human, con in the human uh -huh, experiment so far, have done a lot of work to release themselves or close out this chapter. And I did just hear it was a karmic chapter. Some others haven't. And one of the main reasons why, if you find yourself kind of still in the same paradigm as you move forward. I'm not exactly sure if you would be aware of it right now, whether you're in the same paradigm or not, but you will experience it in the near future. You'll start to understand, you'll start to see it. 
you'll start to be coming up against the same energies or similar energies as you had in the past, probably thinking, well, I should have closed this out by now. Why haven't I closed this out by now? Here's the thing. Overall energy right now is the seven of pentacles. Wow. To the eight of pentacles, to the fool, to the king of cups, to the queen of cups. Wow, you guys. To the, okay, to the queen of pentacles, to judgment. Or in this deck, it's karma. So what is this saying here? Well, let's start at the beginning. This is talking about seven of pentacles. This is saying, this is, the, the seven of pentacles is an energy of learning through the contrast. It is, it can be seen as Einstein's definition of insanity, doing something the same way over and over and over again, but expecting a different result. And what I feel like here is this is part of the collective that are experiencing not having graduated from this chapter or from this vibratory rate yet or this vibration yet. You're sitting here looking at your crop thinking, why did this grow back again? I did what I thought I was supposed to do. But see, the thing about it is you're being asked to completely change your approach. Eight of pentacles to the, to the fool. Okay, there is, it, it, it almost feels like this is saying to you that in, in many cases, you need to start from the ground up. You need to take what it is you learn from this situation here, seven of pentacles, and all of the experience that you've gained in it, all of the ways that you've expressed yourself, all the ways that you've gone about developing whatever it is to get you to this, this harvestable, harvestable period right now, because the seven of pentacles does represent a harvest, okay? The thing about it is when, you, when it comes to the seven of pentacles, the question is, is this the harvest that you wanted or is this the harvest that you intended? And in many cases, well, what this feels like for whomever this reading is for, it feels like you're being asked to take stock and understand what it is you went through here in the seven of pentacles and then go back to the drawing board, eight of pentacles and start from the ground up, the fool. Take a leap of faith, move in a new direction, try something new and be consistent about it. This is not a situation where you can just say, all right, well, I'm gonna start something. I'm gonna try a new approach and I'm gonna try it for five minutes. And if it doesn't work, then I'm not gonna follow through with it or I'm not gonna stick with it. No, <laughs> no. You're being asked to completely change your approach and stick with it. The Eight of Pentacles is um, consistency. It's, it's, it, in some cases, you could be, it could be seen as hard work, but it's the type of hard work where if you're really into it, you completely, you, I'm sorry, if you're really into it or if you really dive deep into it, you completely lose all track of time. Why? Because you're so focused on, on crafting whatever it is you're crafting, right? It doesn't have to be that hard, but you are being asked to take a leap of faith. Now, continuing, you have the king to the queen of cups. So... The other element of this situation for you is needing to balance and integrate your masculine with your feminine. And those of us that are really moving forward, shifting into the new paradigm, graduating from this lesson, this is what we achieved. We achieved a harmony, a harmonization, a balancing, a union of our inner masculine and feminine energies. Um, if you really want help with that, Moving forward into the new year, starting January 1st, I'm going to be bringing back my um, the readings that I've been doing in terms of your inner masculine and your inner feminine. Um, the Their link should be up in the top of your screen, the top right of your screen, um, to playlists. If you've never seen any of those readings of mine before, check out those readings. I'm going to try and put the playlists up there, but if I can't put the playlist, then I'll just put one of the readings so that you can see it. Um, but I'm going to be offering those again, starting January 1st over on Patreon. I believe it is the, the inner balance package, which gets you morning coffee, daily readings for $7 a month. Plus, I mean, daily readings from Monday through Friday, um, Friday would be like a, a weekend collective reading. Um, and then bi-weekly, I will be doing your inner masculine and your inner feminine readings. So check out the link, to check out the videos that I've done in the past that are still available here on YouTube. Um, but this is what we're working towards. This is what humanity really needs right now. The balancing and the harmonization and the integration of your inner masculine and feminine energies. 
Okay, specifically with the Queen of Cups, you're being asked to look at your emotions, to face your emotions. Those of us on the feminine side will have a little bit of an easier time with it. Those on the masculine side, okay, you're going to have a little bit more difficulty, but you're, you are supported, okay? You, we're here for you. If you need help, just reach out, all right? But you're needing to, you're needing to face your emotions. You're needing to uh, face your emotional reality. And then with the King of Cups, you're being asked to come to a sense of emotional maturity, okay? Because as you go through this shift and as you start to balance and integrate your masculine and feminine energies, there are probably going to be some pretty heavy storms around you and you're going to need to be able to weather these storms no matter what. That's what the King of Cups represents, okay? With that, you get to the Queen of Pentacles which is a representation of the divine feminine energies, but it's a representation of the divine feminine rising in all of us and finding our worth within the feminine realm, reclaiming our feminine power, rising to that occasion, judgment, or in this deck, it's karma, okay? Yes. Oh, wait, it was the other way around. I might sneeze. Ugh. Okay, but see, that was just at the bottom of the deck. We have some more cards that have come out here with this Ten of Pentacles in reverse, okay? Wow. All right, you guys. So... All right, we're definitely, I just heard the shadow side. We're definitely talking about the shadow end of the collective here. Those of us that have um, really not, you, you got to do some shadow work here. You got to start facing your shadow. And I'm going to pause for a second because I, I need to, my nose is acting up. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay, so what we have here, we have the Ten of Swords in reverse. We have the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. We have the Eight of Wands in reverse. But then we have the Three of Wands, and that's upright. All right. So, no matter what, this is for this is probably for a specific person or a select few of you. No matter what, you're never gonna escape this path. I feel like there's an energy of been trying to having tried to avoid this balancing, this integration, this harmony, wrapping up this karmic cycle. Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Ten of Swords in reverse. I feel like somebody, th those of you here that are resonating with this message, in some ways, shapes, or forms, you have been avoiding this. Knight of Pentacles in reverse is t giving me an energy. And I, maybe, did we talk about this yesterday, or was that in the Oh For You Gets Love reading that I did? I don't remember. Um, or maybe it was a personal reading that I did. I don't remember. But... Um, Oh, yes, and I am available for personal readings. I'm just doing those on a pretty limited scale, especially moving into the next year because I want to get into the flow of this new workload before I really accept full-time personals. But email me, and I'll, 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 I'll work it out with you. Anyway, Knight of Pentacles in reverse is giving me an energy of procrastination. Uh, the Knight of Pentacles is a very thorough energy, okay? He is one to... Cross every T, dot every single I, make sure everything is in place and in order before he moves on to the next step or the next part of the journey. But that energy can be taken too far and you could be stalling. The cats are chasing the chickens. Um, you could be stalling here. In a perfectionism type of way, okay, I do feel like there are family situations that are going on here, maybe marriages that are no longer serving, ten of swords in reverse that need to come to an end, and yet societal reasons, keeping it up for the kids, which I will never endorse, I will never, uh, I will never advocate for that. When, especially when the situation is not happy. If you guys are not happy together and you don't want to be together, don't stay together for the kids. That's not doing anything. It's not benefiting them. It's not showing them anything good. It's showing people miserable together. Instead, wouldn't you want to show your child how to be happy? And if that means not being with the person that you originally thought you were going to be with, so the fuck what? I mean, it's that, I mean, like, 
it's 20, it's almost 2021. Let's get over it. You know what I mean? Like it happens. It's not a big deal. All right. So, but there are some, there are some ways in which I feel somebody is procrastinating here. It could be for somewhat valid reasons. It could be for the sheer fact that someone is still in here in this seven of pentacles. Let me try this over and over and over again. Maybe it'll work eventually. And at some point you're just going to have to say to yourself, no, this is not going to work. I need to just let it go. And the reason why you're blocked, eight of wands in reverse, the reason why you're not able to move forward is because you refuse to allow this to put to be put to rest. You've worked hard, diligently. Okay, no one's trying to take that away from you. And I don't want anyone to feel like you're being yelled at right now if you were if you've been deciding to if you've been procrastinating a little bit, I do feel like there's a little bit of fear here in this Knight of Pentacles energy. Not a uh, fear of the unknown, not wanting to move forward, fear uh, fear of feeling like a failure, blah, 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 and all that stuff. None of that is relevant. That's all your ego, okay? That's what life is. Life is a place for us to come down here and to do our thing, to make our mistakes. But making mistakes is important. Why? Because when you make mistakes... Instead of saying you're a terrible person and blah de blah whoop de whoop and putting yourself in all that bullshit, like all this Ten of Swords, nasty, terrible energy. Instead, put it here. Ten of Pentacles. Instead of this, do this. Ten of Pentacles. What did I learn here? And how can I apply that to my next step in the journey? That's what's most important here. Okay. Okay. Let's go a little bit deeper here. Let's start to clarify. Um, all right. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. You know, that King of Cups is also asking for the emotional maturity to set yourself free. This is five. To see something for what it truly is. Recognize through all the, all the emotional turmoil that this situation needs to come to an end. And have the decency and the maturity to walk away from it if necessary if need be you know if the circumstance if the situation calls for it i want to start with this ten of swords here what's this ten of swords in reverse for the collective what is this ten of swords in reverse for the collective wow Overall energy is the Seven of Wands. All right, this is the after tarot. Okay, so here it's very interesting because um, the Seven of Wands and the Five of Wands are opposite of what they were in the original. So in the original, the Seven of Wands is you see a person standing, ha keeping the high ground, okay, defending, them, uh, def defending themselves or seemingly defending themselves against six other wands that you would think are being held or wielded by somebody else, by six other individuals, but you don't actually see those other six individuals. So in that case, the seven of wands can represent a, a sense of over defensiveness or overcoming something, right? Well, in this deck, you actually see those six other people and you do see this person fighting those people off or working on fighting those people off, right? So boundaries. And there is a sense of, of like intensely needing to hold these boundaries. Why? Because of this. The devil with the six of pentacles. And as soon as these two came out, these two came out together. There are more cards, but these two came out together. And as soon as I heard this, I heard piecemeal. So I feel like you're allowing yourself to be given only the bare minimum 
of what it is you should truly be receiving. And I don't know, place that into whatever at whatever definition you want. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this is a general reading, so take it as it resonates. But it's like you're receiving piecemeal. You're allowing yourself to receive just the bare minimum to survive. Because of a lack of self-confidence, because of a sense of codependency, it's like you looking at this devil energy, whatever this is for you, toxicity, there's a sense of codependency here, and you're, it's like you're feeling like you can't have anything more than that, so you're just going to stay here and keep, and just keep getting what you get. And that's exactly what we're not supposed to be doing. That's what this Seven of Pentacles energy is here. Well, better the devil I know, right? How about better no devil at all? How about you release yourself from this? You re-identify yourself. Page of Wands. You go through a balancing and integrating and harmonizing situation. Temperance. So that you are solid and stable within yourself. So that you don't have to re just keep receiving piecemeal from situations or, or jokers like this. Because you have your own sense of inflow. Your own sense of abundance. And I hear some of you asking me this question right now. What the hell do you mean by that? Um, you have your own connection to source. You have your own direct feed of abundance and care and satisfaction. Meaning that you are pulling that in from within you, not from an external source. So in this situation, your piecemeal is directly related to the fact that you are externalizing your happiness. You are externalizing your sense of abundance. It comes from somewhere other than within you. And that is exactly what the devil wants you to continue to believe. Because then that way, the devil can monopolize on your abundance. And say, I'm the only one that you're going to get it from, so you might as well just take what you got. Bullshit. Bullshit. Why? Because you have a sense of internal abundance, independent of everyone else around you in your external reality. Sure, sure. We are human beings and we're meant to work together, but you have the ability to sustain yourself by yourself without the need of external influence, external sources to get your, to get your, 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 your bare, okay, your bare minimum, your survival level, that comes from within. We all come together to make it even better, sure. But you still have a connection to source that is all your own, uniquely your own, that will sustain you. You don't have to rely on this joker, this devil energy with the six of pentacles. One last card here. Ah, yes, the king of wands. Interesting. Stepping up your confidence level. Stepping into your power. Yeah. Stepping into your power so that you can stand up against this individual or this these energies. The devil with the six of pentacles. That's what this king of wands is representing. Having the confidence to put this to rest. Ten of swords. Having the confidence to defend yourself. And to go for your dreams. Oh shit, look at that. You know, I was talking about the how the seven and the five of wands are opposite of their originals in this deck. Well, in the five of wands, you see five individuals that are kind of like fighting or sparring with each other. But in this deck, the five of wands is the exact opposite. These people are all calm. And it looks like either they're all taking turns in speaking their, their truths or this person has the upper hand and has been declared the winner or something. I don't know. doesn't really matter because ultimately when you stand your ground, king of wands, all right, and don't let anybody tell you you can't or that you're incapable or that you have no connection to God because you're some low-life human and God wouldn't, wouldn't communicate with low-life humans. What kind of bullshit is that? Anyway, when you stand in this power and you defend yourself, keep everyone else at bay in terms of your dreams, because quite honestly, no one else's opinion matters other than yours. That's when you get the new opportunity. That's when you get the satisfaction. That's when you get to move forward on your path. But remember, you have got to walk away from these energies. 
feeling inadequate, five of pentacles, feeling left out in the cold, not feeling good enough, lacking your connection to source that would keep you warm throughout the winter. You see, those people are right in front of a church. Instead of huddled underneath that window, why don't they just knock on the door and say, can we spend some time inside? Why must that woman carry all of those burdens on her all her own? This Five of Pentacles energy is very much saying, please ask for help. You don't have to do this alone. Please ask for help. We're right here. We've been wanting to help you this whole time. But some of you refuse because you're too proud. And that's getting you nowhere. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on here. Let's talk about the Knight of Pentacles in reverse, yes? What's this Knight of Pentacles in reverse for the code? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's funny. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Ace of Swords. But the Knight of Pentacles in reverse is clarified by the Nine of Swords, the Tower, and ooh, the Knight of Pentacles. Would you look at that? <laughs> so this is exactly what I thought it was. This Knight of Pentacles in reverse energy is somebody that's procrastinating. Somebody that is too afraid to let the tower fall. Because here's the thing. The Knight of Pentacles energy is necessary right now in this situation, okay? But it's negatively aspected or it is not properly attuned. Why? Because what you've been... Quite frankly, what this part of the journey has been leading you to understand is that you can't go about this the same way anymore. The tower has to fall and the demons or your demons, the devils, whatnot, whatever, the toxicity, the codependency that has been allowing this tower to stand need to be faced and slayed. So that you can then take this Knight of Pentacles energy and move forward and plant a new crop. Look, the, look, you see how the field is tilled behind him there? That's ready for a new crop. Huh. Would you look at that? Seven of Pentacles. We don't want this crop any longer. This harvest is not what we want any longer. Or maybe in some cases it's not what we intended. So we've got to rip it up from the roots and start all over. Make sure you get those roots, because if you don't get the roots, they're just going to grow back, right? You got to really till that soil so that you can plant your new crop. But you know this. Oh, my God. Ace of Swords to the Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck. You know this. It's time to lay this to rest. Let's look at the three of wands because now, I mean, what, what, what else, we, what, what we have left here on the table is the ten of pentacles in reverse and the eight of wands in reverse. But we've been talking about why we talked about the ten of pentacles in reverse and the eight of wands in reverse is just saying that this is what, this, this is a blockage, okay? This is a blockage. So you're not able to move forward and we just discussed why. All right. But now let's talk about the three of wands. What's come, what is this path for you looking like in the future? Like a little bit of a forward, uh, a forward looking thing. Okay. Keep in mind, I'm not a fortune teller. I tell people this all the time. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm an oracle. All right. So I'm channeling these energies for you. I'm telling you like it is in this current moment, it could change like that. Just me talking to you about this could change your mind, mindset, change the way you see something, change the way you feel about something. And then all of a sudden you're on a brand new timeline. All right. So keep that in mind. But let's look at as of this moment right now, or as of the moment that you're watching this reading and this res and this is resonating with you, let's look at what this Three of Wands represents for you. Yes? 
What's this three of wands? What's this journey ahead looking like? Okay. Damn. All right. Look. Back to this one. Seven of Wands. Defending yourself. Fighting off the opposition. Overcoming this obstacle. What is this obstacle? Deceiving yourself. Seven of Swords. Trying to get away with something. Either you trying to get away with something or someone else trying to get away with something. And that's holding you back on your path. And for some of you, you're trying to get away with not really doing the work that's required for you, but for you to like move forward or level up in which you want to do. And thinking you can just still get away with leveling up. But what you're missing here, what you're missing here, the lesson here, High Priestess with the Eight of Wands, that's going to help you move forward. That's going to help you get unblocked. What you don't see is that what you need to do in this situation, instead of trying to keep getting away with it, you've got to bring justice to the situation. You've got to bring balance and harmony to the situation. What does that mean for you specifically? I don't know. But what I can tell you is the situation is not balanced. It's not harmonized. It's not reciprocal. Why? I don't know. Ask this piece of shit, the devil with the six of pentacles. Right? This is why it's not balanced or reciprocal. Whether this is an individual in your life that's narcissistic and is gaslighting you and is 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 breadcrumbing you, is just giving you the bare minimum piecemeal, or this is a toxic energy, an environment, a situation, a, a, a family situation, a, I don't know, a social group, whatever, a job, I don't know. But something in your life is not balanced and not harmonized, not reciprocal. And you've got to clean that up. You've got to bring balance to that. You've got to harmonize. Take this leap of faith and harmonize, balance your masculine and your feminine energy. Get to the root of your emotional turmoil. Face that emotional storm. Why? Because you are worth so much more and you are being asked to rise above and to, and to accept, take full hold of your value and don't ever let anybody devalue you again ever step into your power and don't take no for an answer justice this justice will open the doorway for you again will unblock your path. Yes? Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to get our closing oracle guidance for today. And we're continuing with the sacred rebels. So buckle up, kids. Get comfy. <laughs> All right, five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. Oh, I hope you guys had a, a, enjoyed the full moon last night. This is five. I started a vision board for all of the, for some of the things that I'm working on manifesting in the next chapter. <laughs> okay. Closing Oracle guidance for the collective today, please, spirit. Closing Oracle. Oh, there we go. You are, oh boy. All right, we got two. All right, settle in, kids. We got two oracle cards. So we got uh, card number six, Shock of the New. 
And card number 19, dream a beautiful dream. I actually, this is weird, but I really want to start with dream, dream a beautiful dream first. Um, it's card number 19, and then the other one is card number 6, but I really want to start, I really feel like starting with this one. Whew. All right, here we go. Dream a beautiful dream. The urge to create is the same within you as it is for the universal creator. It also has the same magical ability to draw harmony into being and to find beautiful order in chaos. This includes bridging harmony and the perfect balance of well-being into your mind, body, and emotions. This is also the part of you that wants to dream of beauty and bring, to, bring it to life in many ways, oh, I'm sorry, in as many ways as possible, in how you eat, dress, look, behave, make love, create art, relate to your community, write your poetry by moonlight, or bathe by candlelight. If you have come to believe that your love of beauty is superficial rather than a genuine expression of your heart's appreciation of symmetry, harmony, and grace, then you may block your ability to create harmony in your life. You may believe it to be an unworthy goal, yet beauty, genuine beauty, rather than superficial glamour, flows from within. It is an expression of radiance within the heart and a, and a love of life. If you have struggled in human culture, then it is time to look to nature instead. Her beauty is boundless, quirky, and endlessly diverse. If you feel blocked, thwarted, or contaminated by others in your quest to bring your beautiful dreams to life, you may feel that your heart is dulled, minimized, or shut down. Small-mindedness can limit beauty to a very narrow physical sense. However, you can shun the social disease of superficial, narrow definitions of beauty, thumb your nose at airbrushed images, and dare to love what is. Honoring nature is one example. Give yourself permission to feel and be beautiful in many ways. You can feel harmony outside of what is supposed to be harmonious. If you are brave and wild enough, you can even find beauty and harmony amongst the chaos of change. Sensing that change is just the creative process kicking into gear. Realizing there is nothing to fear brings even greater beauty, harmony, surrender, and grace to the experience of life creating itself in more stunning forms through you. You are meant to dream of beauty and create beauty in, it, in its far more holistic and creative definition. Beauty is meant to soothe the soul, inspire thoughts of love, devotion, and appreciation, and to balance the nervous system. These are healing effects, healing for the creator and those that received it. If they, oh, I'm sorry, they are worthwhile. They are not meaningless, impractical, flippant, or trivial. A world without the beauty of art in all its various and unique interpretations would be a less colorful, less vibrant, less cheeky, and less healing place to be. Time that you spend dreaming of beauty and allowing it to be born through you in various heart-centered ways is worthwhile. Don't disregard it or discount it. The most beautiful dreams can inspire the practical, hard-working dedication required to bring them to life for the betterment of the world. This oracle also comes with a particular message for you. There is a situation in your life right now where you feel uncertain about your ability to, quote, fix or heal. You lack the inspiration to be able to imagine it differently than how it currently seems to be. You may therefore feel inhibited in your ability to bring about constructive change. However, the perfect beauty of this situation is not revealed by what you attempt to do to it or through trying to impose the, quote, right dream upon it. It has to be healed and perfected into all that it can be through the revelation of the beauty that already lies within it. This happens when we accept the existence of inner harmony in all of creation, even if it cannot be consciously observed. By expressing their I'm sorry, by expecting there to be beauty within a situation, even if it's hidden, will be more or you will be more open to seeing the healing potential even in your challenges. Don't accept 
oh, sorry, don't attempt to force the situation or issue to take the, quote, right, unquote, shape. Instead, ask it to show its beauty to you. This might apply to your body, to your relationship, to your finances, your work situation, a new creative project, or anything else. From this place of inquiry, you will begin to grasp the creative genius of what is and unveil not only its potential beauty, but how perfect it is for you at this time, just as it is. In opening up to the beauty within yourself and your circumstances, you open up to challenge. What we accept can change most easily. It is when we resist or deny that change that slows down and, and suffering persists. You can overcome resistance and denial by approaching it with a curious mind, an open heart, and the healing process below, which we're not going to get into. By the way, this oracle has come to you because you have the power to be a positive influence in whatever situation holds the most meaning for you right now. And you need to know that. Ooh, the sacred breath will be coming for us, y'all. Yikes. <laughs> All right. So last we have card number six. This is Shock of the New. What wild, unconventional voice is calling to you? Can you hear it? It is so different and so unusual, it might be hard to decipher, like hearing an unfamiliar language for the first time. It might be hard to discern what great clarity now Oh, I'm sorry, it might be hard to discern with great clarity now, but there is an affinity between you and this strangely beautiful newness seeking to manifest. This oracle says there is a stirring at the deepest level within you. Something new will break through and the process of this birth may be a shock to you. The shock will transform into great joy and a sense of tremendous liberation, but you must bear the strangeness first. That strangeness might be something that rattles your beliefs about yourself and your world, daring you to become more of yourself, more open to where life is leading you, and more willing to be the unique, sacred art being crafted by the hand of the universal creator. Nature never shies away from strange beauty. She allows for endless diversity, and her sacred works are often peculiar and stunning. You live within her field of creative grace, as a specially created work that also creates. You are being asked to surrender any fear you may have of being seen as exotic, unusual, eccentric, or bizarre. Very much Aquarian energy. Interesting, because in tropical astrology, this whole um, Saturn-Jupiter conjunction happened in Aquarius. Technically, in sidereal astrology, it really happened in Capricorn, but there's a lot of Aquarian energy coming through right now in the collective, especially here, so this is good, I like this. Do, 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 You are being asked to make peace with strange beauty and let it, and to let it happen through you in creative flow. Perhaps you need to allow your conventional ideas of beauty to become even more inspired and open. Perhaps you can allow your need for the world to behave according to your fixed ideas to fall away. You will receive so much more in its place. This oracle comes with a special message for you. There are rumblings and stirrings of the created life force happening now, deep in the undercurrents of your being. If you are very attuned or sensitive, you may have consciously felt this already, with excitement, discomfort, or both. If you have not yet sensed these inner stirrings, they are happening all the time. So be on the lookout for the big shift of new birth, the shock of the new, the unconventional, the strangely beautiful, and the disturbing liberation of what is foreign stepping into your life. This is life creating the stage upon which you will experience greater fulfillment. Don't be nervous if the rumble of, changing of change turns into a mighty roar that rocks boats, bursts forth as novel ideas, and changes things in a way that is out of your control. This is life happening. Feel, I'm sorry, free fall into it. The oracle of the shock of the new comes to you saying, the old way is on its way out. You are being invited, dragged, nurtured, and coerced into the new. 
You can handle it. This oracle brings you guidance. You are about to encounter something new and different in your life. This is helpful. Don't reject it, no matter how small or insignificant or how powerful and life-changing it may seem to be. You are being asked to dispense with your reliance on the past and what have been your, to your tools to navigate life. You have outgrown your old methods. You will have to fly by the seat of your pants, so to speak, as you experience this as you experiment with new ways to be. Life will show you the way. There you have it. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs> hey.